from your suffering. You see? This intensification of the sense of responsibility towards you as it relates to the liberation of, uh, of, your, of your suffering triggers in me now a very deep compassion huh? to alleviate it. He was, he, hold it one more minute, baby. <laughs> he was about to burst. Huh? All right? It triggers my compassion, authentic compassion, because compassion is not like sympathy. Sympathy is the observation of another person's suffering, but it's, it's like a comment. You do it from your armchair. Oh, that's so, so sad. But there is nothing triggered in you to alleviate the suffering. Hmm? In compassion, you see, it is fueled by all those preceding insights. And so now this compassion wells up, you see, where now there's every attempt to actually alleviate that suffering. And when you your compassion becomes intense, this, 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 this desire, this wish to alleviate your, the suffering of your mother becomes intense. That intensity is what we call love. You see? That intensity is what we call love. Now I, say, I love you. You understand? And then now this is interesting. And the next step, how do is how do I alleviate your sin? How do I help you obtain the happiness that you see, but do not know the cause? How do I help you out of the, the delusion that you have fallen into by being born again into samsara? You don't have a guru. You don't know Dhamma. You don't know the teaching. Very, many times my mother has fallen people in a certain situation where she don't even have the intellect to even understand Dhamma. You see, just floundering in this samsara, suffering. The thing that happens next is, is the effect of those previous realizations. It is what triggers my sadhana. Now, it is what really motivates me to attain enlightenment. You pursue enlightenment so that you can become capable of alleviating the suffering of your, these mother people. It's not just you, your enlightenment no more, you see? It is an alignment. You want to attain Buddhahood so that you can liberate the suffering of all these mother beings. Because you realize that only by your attaining Buddhahood, only by your becoming enlightened, can you be of any help. What help are you going to do now? And you look in this life at your own mother. Now your own mother is suffering. Now this woman has loved you. This woman has sacrificed for you. This woman has gone through all kinds of hardships for you. You understand? And she's suffering and you can't do nothing because you have no enlightenment. You have nothing. And you have to therefore simply wash your mother's son. Wash your father's son. Wash your children. Watch everything that you love because you have not attained any enlightenment. And so therefore, the pursuit of enlightenment takes on a whole nother level. You begin to pursue your enlightenment not only to guarantee your own higher rebirth, your own attainment of a heaven realm, and so forth and so on, but you also pursue enlightenment for the sake of alleviating the suffering of all those beings who have been your mother that you are encountering in this life. And so now your enlightenment is rooted in a double basis, right? And that is the mind of the Buddha, they call it, the Buddha mind. Now you have attained the Christ mind. Now you have attained the, uh, the Dhamma, you see, the mind of an enlightened man, and you pursue out of that. It's much more that can be said, but since you raised the subject, you see, I thought it would be 
instructed to point out to you these things. And when you really understand that, it, and when he really goes in, you could never harm another. All virtues arise out of this kind of awareness of your true relationship with other people. Even now you see that the lower disciplines of restraining the body, speech, and mind, avoiding killing, because that is not only true of every human being that you personally will meet, it's true of every insect that you will meet. Every being, every sentient being that you will personally encounter in this bardo has been your mother, even your aunt. Realizing that you're not so quick to touch it. And that understanding generates virtue, generates morality, generates compassion, generates authentic love for your brother, your sister, for each other, for you, humanity, from your point of experience. It is a very profound thing. And this is the goal of the Bodhisattvas. That's what the Bodhisattva aim is, is to enlighten all his mother and his that they have, they have been your mother, each and every one of them. The thing, before one can really truly enter into that kind of meditation, one very often has to go through a preliminary meditation, a, a preliminary set of contemplations, you see, to, to, to level the field, so to speak, to give you the, the view, to be able to see other people like that. Uh, the practice of what we call establishing equanimity. I mentioned it before. You see, most of us, our relationships with people are based on those who have helped us, those who have harmed us, and those who have done evil. Therefore, there are many black people that you look upon just like white people. You see my point? And so it's never really truly about color. It's just that white people constitute in our minds, that category of people who have harmed us. But then we can add Joe and Maurice and Brother Joe and this person. And this, I mean, there's a lot of black people that also go in that same category from the perspective of your heart, right? This separation of color is just an intellectual thing. It's at the surface of the intellect. But in your heart, you have a whole different way of associating with people. And that is based on harm versus help. Now, the, in this establishing of this insight of the motherhood of all beings, we begin first by looking at people who are neutral. And you have to practice this exercise. You have to, you have to do this. Because only that way will you begin to, ex to develop the capacity to rest in this view that I've discussed. With you. So you look at people who are neutral, who doesn't affect you one way or other, who will not harm you nor help you, right? 
And then you you have to realize now that this person that you just casually walk by, that you don't even speak to, that you don't even acknowledge, that you don't, even, don't even give a damn if they own the planet, has been your mother. You see? And one of the infinite previous births that you had. You have to understand a further thing, people, is that if you subscribe to the law of reincarnation and common and all these other things, then you have to also uh, understand that that means that you have had an infinite variety of births. Infinite. Billions upon billions upon billions since the, before the beginning of time. And that in each of those births, you had a mother. Each and every time you have one, right? And when you add up all of the beings that have been your mother throughout all of the series of incarnations that we have had, everybody you see has played that role. And you too have been their mother. Now this is the tragedy. You too have been somebody's mother, you see. And now you meet that son from a previous birth that you went through all this suffering for, you love so much, but you don't recognize him. And you, therefore now you walk right by him. You don't feel anything for your own son. You see. So we have to begin by first looking at those people who are neutral to us. Who need to help Muhammad. And then practice developing this insight. Practice understanding this insight. Because this is what all the Buddhas are taught, with no exception. All spiritual teachers never teach the discipline. No, none has, nor will they ever. All have taught the brotherhood of man. Not because that's some hip, chick, moral thing. It is a fact. They're speaking out of the fact of their knowledge, their insight, their experience. You see? Now, those of us who come and begin to follow these teachers 2,000 years later or 50 years, now we bring all kinds of bullshit in. You understand? So now, uh, only the chosen people of Israel. Now this is nonsense. All people are chosen. All people are your mother. What to say chosen? You see? But we start coalescing. Now white people, as you know, as we all know, have segregated themselves. You see? As if black people are not a part of their, 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 their humanity. You see? And so forth and so on. And the, the, the suffering, the penalty will be there. They are the one who will become spiritually retarded. Because whenever you lose this mother being view, you, your own spiritual retardation starts setting. Right? And then you become cold, calculated, brutal, ugly. You can't feel no more. You become disconnected, self contracted aggressive, violent, ignorant, so forth and so on. All of those qualities that you recall from, that you perceive in so-called white people, exist because they lost the view. And if you lose the view, you will simply become that. That's not most likely. So we begin then with these neutral people. And then we begin to practice in establishing the, the motherhood of all beings view with those who have harmed us. But those who have harmed us, those who have failed to help us. And we begin to go deep into that in spite of their, you don't like them because they have not helped you. You see? And you begin to really examine the basis of your dislike for people. Have you ever examined why you dislike certain people? Really, go into that. Why you dislike this person? Jealousy. Jealousy envy, they didn't help me, they betrayed me, you know. But you know, God, Mom, sometimes you can meet someone and it just, you just pick up some negative vibrations, sure. you know? Sure, sure you can. And because that's all is based on prior comments. <laughs> you see? Prior comments. Something the person may have did to me, or I may have did Something you did to the life. person, yes. These are all conflicts that have carried over from one verse into the next verse. This is all the, the, the playing out of karma. But if, for instance, if my mother curses me, slaps me, I cannot abandon her for that. You see? 
This is my mother. You understand? My recollection of her loving kindness and tenderness and compassion. Because remember, most of these injuries, sometimes they're not really major injuries they've done to you. Now they just looked at you the wrong way. Or they didn't acknowledge you. Or they didn't call you mister or man. You understand? Or they didn't give you the 10 bucks. I mean, meaningless little stuff. And you have cast away your mother? 